Don't regret making some of the biggest mistakes when selling your house, especially if you are thinking about putting your house on the market in the next 12 months. There are some big money pitfalls that you definitely want to avoid. In this video, I'll share six of the biggest mistakes that sellers can make and how to avoid them when you're selling your home and make sure you stay till the end because I'll provide a bonus tip that could save you thousands and many sellers are missing. So make sure you stay till the end. Hey, real quick, I'm Jade here in San Diego. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My channel is all about helping homeowners and quick and easy advice and tips on how to sell your home made simple. Okay, now back to the video. Getting right to it, mistake number one is overpricing. The number one factor in selling a house is price. Now think about it. If you were to price your house $200,000 over market price, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is inside, if you've staged it professionally, if it's been renovated, chances are if it's $200,000 over market price, it's gonna sit on the market and turn off a lot of buyers. Now, on the other hand, if you underprice it by $100,000 or $200,000, it doesn't matter what state it is. If it has seen a lot better days and the carpets are dirty, there's handprints on the walls, the plumbing system leaks, chances are even though you've got a really big fixer, it'll still sell. So a lot of it comes down to price. Obviously you don't want to underprice it because you don't want to leave money on the table or give your house away. It's a matter of finding that sweet spot on where buyers will find value in your house for the price. And also you're going to feel good about what you ultimately sell your house for. I might sound a little biased here, but reach out to an experienced realtor who does this as a full-time job and they will be able to give you a very good estimate on what your house is worth. So don't fall into this trap of pricing your house too high and thinking you can just negotiate down. You're going to put off a lot of buyers from walking through your front door and you want as many buyers as you can coming and taking a look at your house in person. And if you overprice it, your house will sit on the market and then people will start thinking what's wrong with the house and overpricing just generally can backfire. Moving on to mistake number two is hiding big repairs. Okay, this is a big no-no when it comes to selling your house. Hiding major problems from your buyer. It might seem like a good idea in the beginning, but keeping it under wraps is not a good idea. It might make your house look a little more appealing, but this is a mistake for several reasons. First off, buyers are going to eventually find out when they do a home inspection. So there might be a breakdown in trust. And if it's a big enough issue and the buyers don't want to deal with it, you can have a breakdown in negotiations and you might fall out of escrow, which you definitely don't want to happen. And if by chance this big issue goes undiscovered and you still sell the house and it closes, and then somehow they can find out that you knew about this problem, you could get sued. And I'm sure you don't want to get sued. Secondly, being upfront about a major issue allows you to control the narrative. You can explain the problem, provide estimates for repairs upfront, or you could do them before listing your house on the market. This transparency can actually build trust and make your property more attractive. And lastly, undisclosed problems can affect your bottom line and what your house ultimately sells for. When buyers find out that there's a significant issue that hasn't been disclosed up front, they are going to ask for a big reduction in price or ask for the repair at closing. Previously, I worked with buyers and we went through a home inspection and there was a big foundation issue. So the buyers and myself were very concerned about how much this foundation issue to repair it was gonna cost. So they had to order a specialized foundation report. And eventually it came back, we were worried that it was gonna be $70,000. That would be the maximum that they were looking at. But good news was it was only 10,000. And we luckily were able to negotiate that full foundation repair with the sellers. So my buyers were able to get that back in credit. 
But for other buyers, this might have been a deal breaker. So it's just better to be upfront. If you do know about big problems, to be upfront instead of having to deal with them in the middle of escrow and having the possibility of your sale falling apart or even facing legal troubles later on. Moving on to mistake number three is not expecting home seller costs. So you are selling your house and a buyer is going to come in, make an offer and give you money for your house, which is great. But at the same time, there are some costs associated with selling the house. Assuming that you have some equity in the house, the money that you don't have to pay back to a mortgage company or a bank with the equity that you have left over after the sale, you can pay for these costs. So just to be aware of what these costs would be, here is a list. Agent commissions. Now there's been all this hoopla in the news about the decoupling of the commissions for the listing agent and the buyer's agent. If you want a video on this, I have one here that explains what is potentially going to happen in the future. All the new rules will be coming out. They said initially in July, now it's been moved to August. So check out this video that I made and hopefully this will shed some light on that. So I'm not going to go into it right here, but do account for agent commissions unless you're selling your house by yourself. Anyway, moving on, there is also closing costs, and this could be anywhere from 1% to 3% of the purchase price. The closing costs also include title transfer fees, taxes, attorney fees, depending on what state you're in, escrow fee, title company fees, a no So there is generally a break then that you can get from a escrow company, or you could ask your realtor to break these down for you, but it does run generally around one to 3%. Also, there are seller concessions to think about. Think about when you get into escrow with a buyer and the request for repairs comes back. The buyer might request some credit. So negotiate there and see what number you can come up with. With, so you might have to give some money back if you want the sale to close, unless you wanted to put your house back on the market. That's obviously up to you. Also, there are moving expenses. On average, it costs $1,700 to move, but check with your local moving company and be careful. These moving costs can add up fast, and especially if you are including packing as well. And optional expenses could be staging and a home inspection up front before you list the house. Staging can start from $1,500 and up, and also a home inspection could be around $500. So make sure you take this into account, add this all up before selling your house, so you know how much the bottom line is going to be. Moving on to mistake number four is poor marketing. It is still a seller's market right now, and there is very low inventory and high buyer demand, but that's no guarantee that buyers are going to be rushing to purchase your property. Marketing still counts, so don't skimp on marketing. Marketing your home still plays a huge role on how quickly it sells and how much you are going to get for it. Poor marketing is a big mistake when it comes to selling your home quickly and for the best possible price. Some of the reasons why poor marketing is not a good avenue to take is it creates a limited exposure. Your home won't reach a wide audience and expose your property to the maximum number of buyers. Fewer people will know about your listing and fewer potential buyers will be attracted to it. Poor marketing leads to poor first impressions, low quality photos, non-engaging descriptions that only highlight the features and not also the benefits of your home can turn off potential buyers instantly. First impressions do count and bad marketing can make your home less desirable. Another reason why you will need to focus on good marketing is longer time on the market. Homes that aren't marketed well tend to sit longer on the market and also poor marketing can lead to fewer showings and fewer offers. And that's definitely something that you want to avoid. So when it comes to marketing, make sure you have professional photos, and a variety of marketing channels, such as an open house, social media marketing, and neighborhood flyers. 
investing in good marketing and investing in a realtor who knows what he or she is doing is essential for maximizing your home's exposure, attracting the right buyers and securing the best price. And on the breakdown on who's going to pay for all this, work this out with your realtor and find out what they are going to be doing in terms of marketing and who is going to pay for what. Moving on to mistake number five is, hey, real quick, if you found this video helpful at all, could you do me a favor and hit that like button and then also consider subscribing to the channel so I know to make more videos like this with helpful and useful advice for homeowners to sell their home quickly. And if you have any questions, especially for the San Diego County area, please don't hesitate to call or text me. My details are in the description below. Okay, back to mistake number five. Moving on to mistake number five is not decluttering and not depersonalizing your home. If you want to put your house in the best possible light, decluttering is key. And first off, you are going to move. You are going to have to pack up your stuff anyway. You might as well start doing it now before you put your house on the market and everybody walks through your front door. Declutter 30 to 50% of your items. Make sure most of your surfaces are clear and also take down those family photos. You want buyers to envision themselves walking through your house and picturing how they can live there and not how you are living in the home and your family photos. So take away those little dwarf figurines or Disney photos and put in more abstract pictures, paintings, or put in landscape photos so your home can really shine. And some quick tips for decluttering is walk around your house and say goodbye to items that you are not using anymore. And it's not only about getting rid of clutter, it's also about looking at your furniture. Is it oversized? Is it cluttering up the room and making your space appear small? So think about removing some of your furniture items so it actually gives your room more space and appears more spacious. And also clear out your closets. You don't want stuffed closets. No matter how big or small your closets are, if it's packed, it will feel like there's no room to put your clothes away. Pack away your clothes that you aren't going to be using in the next two to three months. And so there's just some visual breathing space for your closets because everybody wants more storage. So when you're walking through your house and decluttering and depersonalizing, think simple, clean, and fresh. This also applies to your design choices. Bold colors, bright colors, busy wallpaper, that is going to potentially turn off some buyers. So if you can swap this out beforehand or paint a bright room a more neutral color, that will definitely benefit you in the end and will appeal to the widest audience. So start decluttering and depersonalizing to make your home more inviting for potential buyers. Now moving on to the last tip is mistake number six is selling the home yourself. You can sell the home yourself. It does happen, but out of all the real estate transactions that happen for sale by owners only account for 7% of sales in the U.S. According to a report from the National Association of Realtors last year in 2023, the typical for sale by owner home sold for $310,000, while the typical home sold by a realtor sold for $405,000. That's a difference of $95,000 for an agent assisted home. So you do the math. And while the professional fee of a realtor does cost money, it more than outweighs what you will ultimately sell your house for and what you put into your pocket. A professional realtor will bring expertise to the table. They will help you price your home right from the get-go, plus they're pros at negotiating. While you won't see this upfront, a skilled negotiator will be able to contribute to your bottom line by thousands, outweighing the cost of their fee. Also, they will handle showings, saving you time, and also getting into the nitty gritty. Let's talk paperwork and the legal implications. There are a lot of complex contracts and requirements that a realtor has access to. And you don't want to miss a crucial detail that would cause you legal troubles later on. And selling a home is a full-time job. 
From marketing to negotiating to handling all the paperwork, it can get overwhelming, especially if you are juggling your regular responsibilities. And let's be real, selling your home can get pretty emotional. So it would be beneficial to have a third party that is not emotionally attached to the home and helping you navigate and negotiate on your behalf. And while selling your home by yourself can seem like a good idea in the beginning, it has a lot of potential drawbacks that can cost you thousands of dollars in the end. So there you have it. Thank you for staying and watching till the end. And now if you're curious about the bonus tip. So the bonus tip mistake that many sellers make is not keeping track of their selling expenses and capital improvement. So this has to do with the capital gains tax. If you fall into that bracket and capital gains is based on how much you profit after you sell your house and the capital gains is the taxable profits that you make from the sale of your house. Capital gains is equal to how much you sell your house for minus your home's cost basis, which is the original price that you sold your house for. So if you originally bought your house for $500,000 and if you sold it for $750,000, if you are single, you have a tax exemption of $250,000. So that difference between 500,000 and 750,000 is 250,000. If you are singled, your tax exemption would be 250,000. So you wouldn't owe anything on that capital gains tax. And if you are married and filing jointly, you have a capital gains tax exemption of 500,000. So this bonus tip has to do with that because if you are exceeding that, you don't want to pay tax on any extra profit above the 250000 if you are filing as a single taxpayer or filing jointly for 500000 as a married joint taxpayer. And while I'm not a tax expert, make sure you consult with your tax expert first. Here is a general rule that you could follow. If your home sales profit exceed your exemption, you want to break down that extra capital gains that you don't want to pay tax on. So make sure you keep track of your home improvements. Home improvements could include major improvements, and these could be in addition to your home, such as a bedroom, bathroom, deck, or garage, landscaping, exterior upgrades, such as a new roof, new siding, new windows or doors, home improvement systems such as the HVAC, furnace, ductwork, or security system. Also plumbing upgrades, including the septic system, water heater, also interior improvements such as built-in appliances, kitchen modernization, flooring, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, or a new fireplace. Capital improvement is tax deductible, but only if the improvement exists for more than one year and remains in the house when you sell. But again, I am not an expert in the tax field, so please double check with your tax expert. And another tax benefit to reduce your capital gains is selling expenses. So make sure to keep the receipts for your real estate agent commissions, transfer tax, recording fees, settlement or escrow fees, advertising fees, attorney fees, and a new one that you might do this transaction is buying the mortgage point down for the buyer. So you can reduce your capital gains tax through seller paid points and giving a concession to the buyer and also appraisal fees. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful and you don't make these mistakes when you're selling your house. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to text or call me. My details are in the description below. And also, if you like this video, please check out this one. And thank you for watching.